lot of Canadians here in LA in the film business. A lot of Canadian, uh, a lot of Canadian DPs, cinematographers. I find you, you, you guys just dominated that that market. I don't know what happened, but uh, <laughs> I didn't even know that. That's that's Canadian, amazing. Like holy, oh my god! Every other DP is from Canada. It's insane. I think there's just like a system there that, um, yeah, they just crush. Maybe uh, with all the with all the uh, wilderness, maybe we just people want to take pictures of it, and it starts from there. You uh, mean joke, but that's it. It's the it's the like photographic nature of Canada that like I just swear to God, <laughs> it's an actual thing. It's an actual thing. Well, anyway. I yeah, it, it could be, it could be, but uh, I, I really appreciate the chance to chat with you. Thank you uh, so much for your yeah, time. You. Uh, yeah, of course, for watching. Emily the Criminal is wonderful. I, I had a blast. I just thought it was it was really intense, but it was also like the, there is there is something so, uh, so the the film flows so well, and it's uh, it's just really well told. Uh, I was wondering uh, where where did you get the idea for the project? Um, I mean, you know, I, I went to grad school and got into a ton of debt <laughs> and had <laughs> a lot of crazy time afterwards just with fear and anxiety and dealing, you know, and so I wanted to create something that honored that feeling because so many people have it. So many people are in that zone in the United States, especially. Um, but then like the story specifically, uh, gosh, all right. I remember like um, when I was like 19, I was really broke and I saw this ad online that said like, want to make $200 in an hour? Like go to this location. And I was like, hey, um, <laughs> And I put like a tie on, which is the funniest part of this whole story. And I went to um, the location and it turned out to be like a Holiday Inn Express on the side of the highway. This is in South Carolina where I'm from. And, uh, and I went into this like banquet hall at the Holiday Inn Express and there were all these other equally pathetic looking people there. And then this guy came out and started doing a presentation about what was very clearly like a multi-level marketing scheme, like a pyramid scheme uh and i was like nope and got up and left but to this day i've just wondered like what if i'd stayed what would i have gotten into surely there were other people in the room who did stay and did get into it what was their story like so i always thought that would be an interesting beginning to a movie that's where the idea initially came from so so you were that guy in the back that said nope and then got up and yeah yeah exactly that was me. <laughs> exactly i was like i'm out of here yeah. <laughs> i yeah. it was funny i i that guy is that guy's I, he, as far as I know, he's only in that one scene, but he's he's just yeah. so clear. He just sort of throws his hand. Nope. And he, he walks out. I laughed. I thought it was I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Everybody else is like, I'm in. He's like, I'm no, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I couldn't have everyone be in. because then it would just Of course. Be, literally, they're going to be people who say no. Um, I think we ADR that, though. I don't think that's his real voice. Oh, OK. I voice. I can't remember why we did that, but for, for some reason. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, this, that sort of answer, I was wondering, like this, the, the way that you tell this story, I mean, of course, I, I can say I, I don't know, but it, it feels sort of authentic. Like, did you do any sort of research into, into how these sort of things operate? I mean, I, I, you know, you, you were at the pyramid scheme, but I'm assuming that you weren't, you know, doing credit card fraud, but it just, it's, it just sort of gradually builds as the film goes along. Yeah. Um, I did do a lot of research. I mean, number one, like, it's kind of based on a real thing. I lived in a neighborhood in LA where like, I could just tell there was some organized crime going on. Like you could just sort of, it didn't take a genius to tell like something's going on here. Uh, and then sure enough, there was this big like FBI bust one summer and it took down like 97 people. Uh, and I read about it in the LA Times. And I remember having this realization like, oh, this is like in my neighborhood oh, this is on my street. And then being like, oh, this I know that guy. Like, that's the guy who I fight for a parking space with. And a lot of the crimes they were doing were things I wasn't interested in, like drugs and like gun running. And I was, you know, I don't, I don't care. But like one of the things they were doing was this elaborate credit card scheme that I thought was just the craziest thing I'd ever heard. And it was pretty much what you see in the movie. So that's where I got that idea from. And I did do a lot of research into how that actually works and how to conduct the fraud and how to make the cards and all that stuff. I mean, I, I spoke to people and uh, learned too much. <laughs> Suspiciously too much. Yeah. Well, that, that, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's it. That's it. 
But I mean, that was one of the things I thought was so interesting about it. It's just, it's just sort of happening in plain sight, you know, and it's just sort of like, it's one of these things that you, you probably don't know about the person next to you is, you know, the, the sort of, uh, but it's just sort of out there. It, it was such a wild, wild, uh, yeah. wild reality that we live in. Um, I, know. I mean, I, I like the fact that it's so common. And that it's so like familiar. Like we all have been involved in credit card fraud on some level. We either know someone who's been the target of it, or we ourselves have been the victim of it, or we know of some weirdo we went to high school with who got arrested for it or something. You know, like we're all like it's kind of there in our lives somewhere, but rarely do we stop and think about who is actually out there going to great lengths to commit this. Um, you know, they're real people. So I, I was curious about that. Yeah. Um, this may be an odd person to quote in this film, but maybe not, because uh, this isn't from the film. But the Joker <laughs> uh, famously has said that all it takes is one bad day. Uh, <laughs> and, and I was just wondering, like, do you think that we all have a dark side? Like, you know, as Emily starts off, I mean, we know that she's stressed. You talk about the debt, and, and we feel for her, but it spirals so quickly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we do. I, I think we all have capacity to empathize with someone who does things like this. You know, we might never do them in our lives. Um, we might never even begin to do them. But we at least understand the emotional impetus behind it. Mm. And that was the big thing. Like, I at least need people to understand how she feels. Even if they wouldn't, un even if people would not make the decisions that she makes and, or, or behave the way she behaves they should at least know how she feels and all of us have to have felt like that that's that was the critical thing you know do we all have a dark side well i think we're all just human beings you know and we've had frustrations and angers and disappointments and we've all felt those things we just might not act upon them the way that she does that's the, that that was the key yeah yeah absolutely well, I mean, on, on the flip side of that, I mean, uh, the thing about Emily, the thing, the thing that's so amazing about, about this, this character is that we do empathize with her, even as she continues to push further. Do you think that maybe uh, we judge people too quickly? Because one of the things that pushes her so far is there's, there's people, she just can't catch a break because of this record that she has uh, from her youth. I was just wondering how you felt about that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, a lot of that's kind of a device. Like I knew I needed to give her some kind of history that would make it really difficult for her in order to get employment. So the audience would continuously be on her side while she does crimes, you know? Like if she didn't have that criminal history, then I think we would kind of lose empathy with her at a certain point. We'd be like, all right, just go get a job, you know? But she can't. So I, I needed that. Just like the nuts and bolts of the narrative, I need that to be there. Um, but then also, like, I don't know, man, it, it definitely says something about us that we were, we permanently kind of mark people and prevent them from having opportunities because of a decision they could have made years ago, even decades ago. I think it asserts something really sad, which is that we assume that people aren't able to change. Um, and uh, I, I think that's just incredibly inhumane. Uh, I think why put people through a correctional process unless we assume that they have the capacity to change. It's kind of um, redundant at that stage. So, yeah, I have a lot of feel a lot of feelings surrounding that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to ask you too uh, about Aubrey because she's wonderful in this film. Um, she's absolutely wonderful. She all. And she's often played characters with sort of a bit of a darker edge, like just, just sort of not, it, it, I'm not saying that exclusively, but, but often that's come up. Um, yeah. But uh, in, in creating the character with her, I was just wondering uh, what it is that you wanted to see, that you did see in her and that you wanted to see from her in the performance. Um, you know, the things I see from her naturally are, are just like, uh, she's really determined. And she's really like when she wants something, she just goes for it and has so little fear. And it's just 
has this like no holds barred like we're going you know what i mean like i i loved that about her and i wanted to see that in the character but then like what kind of stuff that i want in the character regardless of what she brought to the table i mean i needed to see um i needed to see someone who has potential and who is capable of things and capable of great things and it's just not ever able to have the opportunity if it's someone who you kind of feel like this person's just a screw up and is never going to go anywhere, then that doesn't really work. You know, then we're not really cheering for that person. So I needed it. To, I needed, I needed her to be like, actually, I think this person is talented and is intelligent and stands up for herself. And man, isn't it a tragedy that she just doesn't have the opportunity. Like that's, that's what I needed more than anything for it to be. I, I can imagine a different universe in which, it's Emily's character who becomes a successful ad agency boss instead of Gina Gershon, you know? Like, clearly they're kind of similar and from the same world and, like, have the same grittiness and, like, and they're both smart. Like, it's just one happened to get there at a certain era and the other didn't, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I don't know, hopefully that answers your question, but I needed to be someone who we, we, we could see the potential in them. Yeah, I love that. I, absolutely. And like I said, she she goes for it, man. There's some moments in there that I'm genuinely terrified for because she oh, she turns yeah. it on and off. Yeah. Like, well, there, there, there are these moments where it's sort of like, well, no, I have. I think she actually says at one point, the problem was I didn't go far enough in my in my in my past. And <sighs> it's it's you can see it like there are these moments where she goes, nope, and, and she goes um it's just 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 remarkable aubrey has an incredible capacity to just like say screw it and just go for something yeah it's like her default mode is just like fearless cannonballing into something and uh you gotta respect it absolutely <laughs> um well wonderful. john i you know just as we as we wrap up here uh first you know i was just wondering what what you hope people take away from the film I mean, first and foremost, I hope they just enjoy it and have a good ride. You know, that's kind of first. I want it to be like a good, entertaining ride, first and foremost. So if that's all they took away, then like, great, you know, mission accomplished. But if they watch it and they also think a little bit more about maybe the debt crisis and the people who are enduring that and like the long-term effects that that's going to have, that would be the icing on the cake, you know? We're going to need more people in the country to be aware of these things and to care about these things in order for them to change because... The people who create laws in this country don't have student debt and they're not going to change it so that's what i hope people come away with ultimately well, i i appreciate that john honestly the film is a blast uh, it is a ride emily the criminal is it's a it's a lot of fun but like you said there's there is a, a really interesting story and a reality behind it that i think is is worth telling so thank you so much for your time i really really appreciate it thank you so much man and enjoy your time in the wilds of, of Ontario. <laughs> thank you, thank you, I plan on it. All right. All right, great, have a great day. See you, man. Thanks so much.